What's going on, man? How you feeling, man? You are a rich fuck. You are a rich fuck, man. Come sit right by me, man. Right, right where I like you to be. Come here. Sit down here with your fucking... What the hell is this? Some rich bag. This bag, don't this bag look like? This, this look like... Yo, Steve, man. Yo, man. Something like... First, let me... Can I open this? Yeah. It's got some weight to it. This is a nice bag, you fucking rich piece of shit. Let's see. Oh, yeah, see? See, come on, man. <laughs> what are you saying? What is this? No, no, no. I want you to tell the people they can't see. Uh, can you talk into the mic? The Chateau Mouton Rothschild 06, just a real light. Then we hit the ace. ace real quick. We can put the ace on ice right now. The ace. Let's get that chill. Yo, chill. put this on. She heard what the man said. <laughs> she heard what the man said. <laughs> Yo, ice. you can put that on <laughs> ice right now. I don't know if you guys have cigars in there. Whatever you guys want to do. I like cigars. In the front. Oh, yeah. whoa. Ace. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah, correct. Nah, I see. I see. I'm ghetto. I see. Hey, I'm ghetto. I see. Hey, I'm I see it. I'm ghetto, man. So you got to give us some applause, man. He came with the bark. Nah, he did. He did. Let me hit the round of applause for Oh, Steve, look at that. Yeah, oh, yeah, you gotta zip it all the way down, man. I, he's not accustomed to that nice shit, you know. <laughs> open it up, boom, boom. Everything is smooth. <laughs> See how I open that? How smooth Everything that is smooth. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Stout is here to join us. Let me hit the round of applause one more time. Yeah, 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 yeah. He brought me a really beautiful, rich nigga looking bag uh, filled with some, what's this, some, some Rothschild. That's, Rothschild. That's a rich some name, ace. some Ace. Cigars. This is beautiful, man. You know what this reminds me of? No. <laughs> Let me tell you what this reminds me of. No. I was in Miami by happenstance, right? By happenstance, I was in Miami. I was chasing my dick, looking for something to do for the night. Of course. That's what you do in Miami. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, wound up with a really good friend of mine. And she told me to run over to this spot because Steve was over there. And Steve is my guy. So I ran over to the spot. And it was mixy. It was white girls partying, techno <laughs> <was> music. <laughs> they were Spanish. That's what the rich niggas say. They call the white girl Spanish. <laughs> That's not even true. Hey, it was white girls. Listen, it was white girls partying. There were like billionaires. There was billionaires everywhere. Right? Like, it was a lot going on. And I tapped Steve Stout, and I said, yo, man, this is a movie. And he was drunk, and he just didn't, whatever, have fun, man. And then 10 minutes later, a white guy with an accent came in the club. And he was carrying something kind of like Steve with the book bag. I'm going to tell this story. I don't care if you get oh, fucking in right. trouble. <laughs> and he was like, yo, man, Steve said, yo, this gentleman... Just put him on a first class trip from London because he's got this black diamond that I was searching for for years and he found it for me anywhere in the world. This is X, X, X amount of dollars, but he got it for me and he brought it here. Look at this beautiful piece. Oh, I'm sorry. And he pulled this thing out in the club and it was a beautiful piece of jewelry, whatever this was, a diamond. And at that point I knew. Oh, yeah, that's right. It was the... um. I don't know why it's, it's so hot. Whatever, it's a lot of, it's whatever a lot of, that was, it was a beautiful piece. It was a beautiful diamond. It was. It was a beautiful black diamond. It's the, the, it was the star of Africa. It's a lapel pin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's big money talk. I mean, these are these are real things. I mean, we won't even talk. Yo, these are say on. These are real things, yeah. right? I'm gonna use that line one day. By the way. Steve, Steve, it. how you doing, man? This is a long I'm, I'm time good, coming man. with I'm, us I'm, getting you on the pod. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. I'm happy I, to I have I you. I wanted to come here. 
I've been asking to come yeah. here for a minute, man. Got you on the welfare chair. Yeah, I did. No, that's, that's, that's a director's chair. Yeah, nah, that's a good director's no, chair. I'm sure you've directed something at some point. No. No? Home movies. <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. A lot of those in Miami, the yeah. home movies. That has been going on for years. Sure. Got it. Nah. Got it. You probably are one of the inventors of those home movies That's in hip hop. That's not true. No, no. Probably. Don't try to go that But you've been here a long time oh, in hip hop. And that's why I'm glad, I'm glad to have you here yeah. because your name is part of so many legendary stories in hip hop. And even if you don't know those things because you're young, Today, you have United Masters, right? Yeah. You're in plenty mm-hmm. of pictures with Nas, sipping wine, saying that y'all are better than us. Like, you got a lot of shit going on. So when we see it, for me, what you symbolize is one of the guys that came in under the old the old regime, the old set of rules, maybe learned from the old set of rules, and then had to adapt however many years later when you realize much like this generation, okay, a lot of that stuff that we learned and the way that we did things, we could probably do it differently and do, do it a little better. What do, you, what do you say to that? Yeah, it was probably two or, there was probably two or three transitions from the time I got in the business. I got in in um, 90, I really, I, but shit, I got in the business in 92, 91, 92 with Kid and Play. The first thing I did that, that was Steve Stout doing something was I did the theme music um, for the Martin Lawrence show. Oh, wow. You did? Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. I didn't yeah. know that. I, So I found a producer, this kid named Steve Kitt, and uh, I knew Martin. He was kid and play. He used to sleep on the couch. He was on the come up, you know? Mm. And, you know, when he got the show, he, he you know, he gave me the opportunity, and I had my producer, uh, Steve, did the, did the theme music, and that was really the first thing that got me going and managing producers um, and I got my, you know, got my confidence that I could figure it out. And it went from that to, to, to Nas and then Nas to Will Smith and then Will Smith to Trackmasters before track Nas. Yeah. Well, Trackmasters and Nas was the same time. Okay. Uh, both 95 and then, um, Mary and Will Smith and th- then it ended Enrique Iglesias and then it just started going on and on and on. <laughs> Um, it's a resume there, but you know, coming up in the business, it's a resume man, when you could say, and it just went on and on yeah, and yeah. on. After, 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 but after, 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 for the music business outside of the music business. Mm-hmm. And I went into advertising. And people thought that was crazy because I was running Interscope and it was big and we had just did Eight Mile and it was just all these things. But I knew if I went into the advertising business, nobody was there that I could make something happen. And I'm I'm into that kind of thing. I'm into like, if there's no footsteps, then let me just go do it. Let me go lay those things down and I'll do the work. And when I got into advertising, I mean, the first big thing that I did, but I knew people would love it, and it was just my gut instinct was the Allen Iverson Jada Kiss commercial, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I was just like, man, are you kidding me? Like, I know I could do this, and I know people are gonna love this shit, and uh, they were playing the commercial on the radio, mm. um, and it was just like I was like, oh, we could do that, and then that led to, oh, let's then let's do the, let's do the S Carters, let's do sneakers. Let's take it one step further. And we did the S Carters, the G units, the, the ice creams with Pharrell. And, you know, we, it was a, became a thing in 2003, 2004. And then I'm loving it. And it just with McDonald's and it really has gone on and on. And then it went back to music mm. and with United Masters. So basically you're one of the original brand ambassadors of this thing. No, I'm the guy who did That's it. Not, yeah. I'm the guy. There is no other yeah. person. When you talk about hip hop being in advertising and treating it like the brand, like treating the artists like brands and taking that around the world, there is no other person. There's mm. not a second person to name. Mm. So you consciously did that. You knew it was lacking from white America. I knew it. And- I got a glimpse of it. I got a glimpse of it when we did Men in Black and the album sold 10 million copies and the glasses sold more than the album. And nobody even talked about it because in the music business, the issue was we made so much money because consumers, you guys were kids, we were selling you guys an album for $16 in which you only really like one song. Yeah, he's probably right. at your age. 
Well, I did see. Not he just looks, he looks, he just looks like he just yeah. looks good. Don't let the smooth taste fool you. <laughs> well, you don't let the smooth taste fool you. That's a tag. <laughs> but yeah, the rest of us. Oh, yeah, yeah, I got it. <laughs> you buy the one album. You buy the album for what? The margin on that is huge, right? Because you know, it's only one song. You're making so much money. You're not even thinking about all of the other ancillary businesses that you are not making money off of. Like, I mean, all the money that was made off of ringtones that record companies didn't own the ringtone business. They was just giving the money away. So, um, I just, I'm not, I'm not one to get into that. Like, you know, I, I learned from my dad. Like, my dad grew up like a merchant marine mechanic. Like. It don't make a difference, man. No matter what the job is, you got to do the job like it's that job. Mm -hmm. Just because we're making so much money in entertainment doesn't mean you work less because you make more money. Put the same effort in as a plumber, as a mechanic, as somebody else. We ain't got shit. And that's what I did. And so when I left, I'm like, I'm going to figure this thing out. Because what I didn't want to see anymore was like, you watch Fruit Loop commercials and then you got like somebody doing fake rap in the background and right, they, they, right, all that right. stupid shit. And you're looking at it like, this, this ain't even real. Let's put the real dudes in it. Rapper. So I'm like, I'm going to be the guy to figure out how to get the real dudes in it. And I just chipped away at it and got it done. What side of the fence were you on when Super Ugly dropped? <laughs> Which side of the fence was I on? I was never That's an important uh, question. Yeah, no, no, you, I understand you, you, you fly with both But can I get some yeah. alcohol? I mean, of course yeah, you, you can. Okay. Alcohol, we can drink the wine. What are you doing? What are you doing? They got wine. Yo, don't treat our guests like this. Uh, I'll get some water. Uh, <laughs> Not out of a plastic have, uh, cup like the rest of us do either. Nah, we're going to hit the wine, man. Yeah, come on. Yo, don't do that again neither. I didn't like I didn't like I didn't like how we was represented just now. They shouldn't have to ask Can for the wine. No. <laughs> you can't bring the wine and then and have to ask for it. Yeah, come yeah. on, man. It's got you guys, show me a fucking black diamond. You guys in the got club. washing machines in the operation. In the club. <laughs> There's certain things we got to clean up around here, Joe. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, we got to wash it and dry it. Yeah, we got to wash it and dry it. Hey, shit shit got to get clean. Yeah. Shit got to get clean, Steve. Oh, yeah, well, See, yeah. hey, and, don't, and, 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 and you come from the humble beginnings of hip hop. I don't want to ask you about where you found Nas at, but it was, it was a wash and dry around. It was probably. a wash and dry, definitely. Yeah, around. come on, man. Steve, we come from humble beginnings at this podcast. We do. And our old spot was a lot smaller than this. And, and we, did you? And we just made magic out of a really small spot. So we got to this new spot, right? Mm -hmm. After the Spotify deal, all that shit that imploded, we got here. Uh, and we had a minor, my, some minor issues with our co-hosts, our normal co-hosts of however many years. And Ish and Ice are doing me the solid mm -hmm. of filling in while whatever internal issues get handled. So they're not normal <laughs> podcasters. They're hip-hop lovers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hate podcasts, actually. But they're not so normal. So how did you... I mean, what... How, what? <laughs> 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 not you. I, how, how did you... Well, how did you so get you into this gig, man? It's a favor, one. But the typical conversation is normal barbershop shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that we discuss so that we cover is normal stuff that we talk about on a day-to-day -day basis just shooting the shit in the house playing cards you think niggas are gonna come through with the, uh, the rock child on you though, right nah, nah. they'll come through <laughs> nah, that with nah, the bar somebody did that yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah so it's actually that, good so that's where we land I it's thought, fantastic what are you talking about my, my bad i thought you were one of the perfect yeah, guests to have here that's nice thank you yeah of course man i come with gifts no, big personality, you charm. You need to get one of those little party cases. <laughs> big, that's a nice little big party personality. Case you charm. I come with the full package, man. He had the what bag specific for liquor and cigars. That was yeah. fancy. That's that, that was a nice that was bag, fancy. though. That was a nice a bag. alligator. Yeah. That was nice. Steve, yeah. what, what's happening with United Masters? What's going on with United Masters? What's going on is we got we're just past a million artists united on our platform. All independent artists. Let me, pause, man. Let me hit an air yeah, one. On. One guy, million man. artists. Well, can, before, before, can you? For I those gotta who, say one million. Hold on, you gotta keep making me say one million over and over. Again. For those who are not, how many? How many artists? One million. Okay, now, all right, that's <laughs> so, a lot of artists. That is a so lot. I, I use DistroKid. Why are you better than DistroKid? Well, wait, before you answer, can, can, well, for those who are ready to attack, attack. no, he's ready to attack. That's a good question. That's a good question. It's but wait, for, for people who are not <laughs> familiar, <laughs> hear from Ice. For people who are not familiar, can you at least can you give them some? What it like? If I've never heard of United Artists, yeah, can you tell? You know, <laughs> you said expelled. 
Expound. Expound. <laughs> Expound. Uh, <laughs> I'm double checking. He's a rich bastard. He's a uh, rich bastard. This so, guy. Uh, United Masters is distribution. If you want to uh, distribute music and get it on the DSPs, Apple, Spotify, uh, <laughs> uh, Amazon Music, Deezer, and others, you go through United Masters. Rather than signing a record deal, you can go through United Masters. Go through your phone, get the music uploaded mm-hmm. on the DSPs, and then start to earn money on your, your songs. So, so right? an artist can't do that themselves. Like an artist can't. You just can't go to, to Apple and I mean, upload they can. They can try music it. directly. <laughs> no, I'm just saying I'm not. They can try to do it through, themselves. You have to go through a service to do that. Like okay, right? You have to go through uh, an incubator service to Got do it. that. A distributor. We happen to be uh, the best at it. So to you answer your question about uh-huh. DistroKid, or any anyone, it's uh, not specific, anyone or yeah, two, yeah. whatever. They they all do one side of what their business do is is very similar. They do distribution, but we have an agency built inside of United Masters called Translation. Okay, and this agency represents the biggest brands: AT and T, State Farm, mm. the NBA, ESPN, um, the Knicks. And as an example, and what we have on one side is artists. A million artists, mm-hmm. and I always look at artists as creating cultural currency. Mm-hmm. Uh, they always create trends. Mm-hmm. We have that on one side, and on the other side, we have brands. And this creates a marketplace where they can work together. Mm-hmm. And they work okay. together, and we coordinate that all within our offices. Okay. So um, having those level of brand opportunities is much much more unique than what those other services have. Yeah, they have. don't do much. They, don't, they just put you out there. Yeah. That's, well, that's, that's your problem because you're over there. That's true. <laughs> touche, touche, touche. <laughs> you can't say that to people, man. No, you can't. You can't, you can't, you can't say that to people. No, that's what you're supposed to. He asked me a very tough question. He got a million artists. Question. Nah, yeah, you gotta you give said, it back to him. You said that's a tough question. I'm like, no, it's not. He got a million artists. Hey, Joe, he got a million artists. Hey, Joe, he, got a million artists. he can say that. That's yeah. funny. Well, he can say that. No, yeah. you bum, you over there. Yeah, you over there. say that. That's funny. No, I didn't say that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Disrespect. Yeah, but now, but now, but now, your position, like you just said to Parks, that's your problem. You're over there. Mm-hmm. I would assume. I want you over here. I want to get all the artists. <laughs> I'm maybe, maybe but I'm I, I would assume that your position creates enemies with with distribution. <laughs> Yo, this, I'm, I'm just showing everybody the fact that <laughs> you definitely put me in a wine glass, and it says Chrisette Michelle, the artist on it. <laughs> That's Brandon. Is that true? That's, That's Brandon. Brandon. Come Come on. On. Look Come what you brought on. to the game. Oh, Look funny. what you did to the game. I was just honoring your legacy, you know? <laughs> no, the, the position you sit in, doesn't it put you at odds with some of the distributors and labels? Like, well, labels hate you, right? Well, well, the labels, I'm sure, don't like our positioning. You. Well, they hate you. Well, well, the labels are starting to do things like buy independent record companies now because they realize they just bought AWOL, um, Sony did. They realize that they got to start. This is the future, mm-hmm. right? The fastest growing segment in the music business are independent artists. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they didn't like me in the beginning, but they're actually starting to they buy are, those they companies. They like you now, Steve. Okay. Well, that they may have something to do like with that, that may have something to do with just me personally. There we know. go. Okay. All right. <laughs> but outside of that part of it, um, I, I think that it, the industry is morphing and changing. It's no different, Joe. Speaking of not liking people, the way people feel about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you still not like. That's funny. No, they don't like me. Especially yeah. this week. Right? Yeah. Why, why would, why, and why would they like Joe? Well, because Joe decided that he didn't want to sign a deal and do the status quo, sure. that he mm-hmm. wanted to be independent and he control just, his future. These are the values that I've been speaking about for years. This is actually what connected us. Because mm. I wasn't really a fan of Joe as a rapper or anything of that uh, matter. But as Joe morphed into his new role in And can in I tell you guys that all the executives say that about Joe the Rapper? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't into Joe the Rapper. But as he I'll changed, what he says and what he's talking about is crazy. Mm. And as soon as we met, we were meeting up in Harlem, we met a few times, we were just talking. I was like, what he's going to do and where his heart is at is going to be part of tomorrow. 
And it was exactly what I wanted to do with United Masters. And the fact that he just did the deal with Patreon, it's going to fuck things up. Because now you have the next wave of creators saying, I could do that too. With the deal that I announced uh, recently uh, with Apple being an investor in United Masters, what makes this important is now what I'm saying and what they're saying is it's an option to go independent. Like if you go to, to a major label, that's one option. Mm -hmm. But just because you go independent doesn't mean you have you don't have the same opportunities. Prior, you think if you go independent, you're definitely going to get jerked on the opportunities. Right. You're not going to get right. a shot to get yeah, this and that. Yeah. yeah, but now yeah. what we're saying is what well, my goal is to not say, you know, fuck the record companies, but it's just one option. You can go mm -hmm. take an advance mm -hmm. and sign your rights away, right. or you can control your rights, right. come to the United Masters, and get similar opportunities. Gotcha. That's the goal. Gotcha. Right? And I think that's what, Joe, you, you know, you're, you're building what you're doing now, and, like, you want people to say, you could sign a, this company or that company, or you can be independent, own your rights. Mm -hmm. It may take longer to make the money, but you own yourself in perpetuity, and mm -hmm. there's value to that. Absolutely. That's Absolutely. where I think, that's what Joe thinks all the value is. But my stance today, Steve, is I can't convince people of that anymore. Like, I can't twist people's arm to know where the value is, uh, to tell them how they should go about their business. But the shit that you just named is the shit that I've been on, is the shit I'll continue to be on. And that's just, I'm not wavering on some of that. Like... That's where I come from. I've did the majors. I've done the independent. I see where I like. I see where I'm happy. I see where I land. And some of those ideologies are present in podcasting as, as well. Do you know some people, if you're not really talented and you don't believe that you're going to make it, uh -oh. it might be the right idea to just take the bag because you, you, now, you, you don't believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. That might be the better... Financial decision. Sure. But if you're committed to your craft and you believe in yourself. And you work hard. And you work hard for sure. Yeah. Th it makes no sense to what take short to money. Yeah. What is there to question if yeah. that's the case? Because there's a lot of people that believe in themselves and have talent. It's the work hard part that separates, I think, in my my opinion, the people that make it long term. But I'll tell you this right like now. It. But I, I don't care if you have a record deal or you have a podcast deal. Mm. If you are not using your social tools and you're not working hard at marketing yourself mm -hmm. it ain't gonna work anyway Fact. you can have a record deal if you're not using your social media in a way to engage your audience you're not gonna get shit done Fact. it's mm. the same thing with podcasts and everything else so the bet's on you no matter what yeah. you working hard is batteries included mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. this ain't back in the days where you just show up and somebody just put makeup on you and slap a, 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 a outfit on you and be like go on MTV and get it done right. no you gotta work. You gotta do the work yeah. anyway. Yeah, that exists in the major label system for sure. Speaking 100%. of speaking of doing the work, I'll share with you a private conversation that I shouldn't share publicly. Is it private? Not between you and I, but I had this conversation with someone else in confidence, and I'll share pieces of it with you. Thank you. Just to see you respond right, cool. in real time. No problem. I was you talking did. to a friend of mine, and they were telling me that there was a Zoom call recently. It was a very important Zoom call. What I'm learning as somebody that's trying to get as much money as y'all is y'all have secrets y'all y'all you know you're in the y'all you're in the y'all but y'all you Joe acts broke you, I'm gonna see how long he gonna keep pulling this you, joke you puff yeah, oh, yeah, no, it's a different there is a difference it's a different type of money it's a different type of money and that's a salute to yeah, you yeah yeah you've yeah. 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 been doing it a long time so listen so they were telling me about a zoom call and it was a Zoom call, like, for some important matter that Brokey shouldn't be involved in, right? Mm -hmm. And it was you. Let's make up some names. Yeah, yeah, Puff, yeah. Puff, yeah. some important figures. Yeah. And y'all were supposed to speak about New York issues. Yeah. Is this, this ring a bell yet? From the first time, the first word you said. The person that was, <laughs> the, the person that was telling me the story laughed because it's you... <sighs> Let's say Hove and Puff speaking about very important New York issues. Yeah. But you looked wealthy in Miami by a beachfront. Yeah. Hove looked wealthy by a beachfront that wasn't New York. And Puff looked wealthy yeah. <laughs> by a beachfront yeah. that wasn't New York. And the person had to say, yo, dogs, yeah. you niggas got to go change. <laughs> <laughs> you have to That's change. True. You can't fight for these New York... Pa 
policies and all this important shit. <laughs> With all that designer palm trees. In <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> well, part of it's true. The part that's true was that we actually do care about New York City. And we mm-hmm. did have a conversation about New York and, you know, what's how is New York going to return post-COVID? Mm-hmm. Um, and that really matters. That's what we got on this call. And we, we, we taped this for... For that reason. Now, if you look at that and you go, oh, well, look what he has on or look what he has on and they don't look like they care. There's no other reason to do it. Like, Mm -hmm. I can't not be who I am. I came from Queens. I went to five colleges. I didn't graduate. And you know the whole story. It's documented what I did. It's not like um, I just got to the... (laughs) <laughs> the, the the in front of the beach with the thing. Right, right, I, I right. love New York City. New York City and every dirty piece of shit version of it has helped me get to where I am. And what I don't want is for New York to fuck around and turn into Detroit because, you know, people start to leave and it ends up getting fucked up. And it, it's a concerning. It's very concerning to Puff. It's very concerning to Jay. It's very concerning to Nas. It's concerning to a lot, whether you live in New York or not. Mm-hmm. Um... New York Why City. Why is it concerning the people that don't live in New York? Because New York, there's something about New York that you take with you no matter where you go. Got mm-hmm. it. New York pride. Right? Mm-hmm. You take it where no matter where you go, man, and you don't ever want that to go nowhere. Mm-hmm. That, that's why. So that's do you what. think that that new entrepreneurs, right, mm-hmm. that bump into their first bit of money, should stay in New York? No, it's not about staying in New York. No, no, that's Uh-oh. a separate point. I'm asking. Okay, I'm okay. asking. Do you? And when you when you talk about the state of New York and the future of New York, do you see new young black entrepreneurs staying in New York with their new wealth? Uh, listen, because that's if, the pro- that's the well, conversation well, 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 I'm well, having well, with yeah, a lot of people. Now this out is here. my problem. If New York thinks that the solution out of this is just raising the taxes ridiculously and making it so that you have to pay seventy percent of your money to live in New York and get shitty services. Um, then no, they shouldn't be in New York. If New York is going to cost so much to live in it and what you get back out of it doesn't return, no, you okay. shouldn't live in New York. Okay. Why is that new? It's always been that. No, it, no, they're raising my, my, my Outside uh, of the tax issue, it's always been cramped. It's always been expensive. Um, expensive as fuck. Mm-hmm. And Inconvenient again, what you ways. get yeah. for your dollar hasn't ever really That's, been a thing. New, nah, New York sh- is living off of New York. I'm, I'm listen. I I, you disagree? I I disagree with you. I disagree with you because it's expensive, but rich with opportunity. I agree. So and, and so you I can't. Fall on that yeah. Side yeah. Of so when you so, so when that's saying, that. So is it the metropolitan area then? You mean? Because mm, you can haul ass to New Jersey and have. You be very hard. very specific. Like, no no no. I'm saying <laughs> I'm from Jersey. No, I'm not saying that. Like, I'm saying, oh, I'm from Jersey. You know so. the taxes don't in Jersey is high too. Higher, high shit. higher, the and highest. You and you don't get shit. <laughs> the high. We get a yard, nigga. Don't do that. <laughs> 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 and we got opportunities. A yard. Okay, how about how about opportunities? Steve, it's ten minutes. But it's right there. Like, oh, it's ten minutes. No, but I'm just saying. It's New Jersey, though. I can get crickets, <laughs> but I can get to New York faster than New Yorkers. Exactly. Explain that. I'm, I can walk. You, I can walk. I that? can walk to New York. I can walk to New York City from my you, house. You can take a ferry. I can, no, no, I don't have to take a ferry. Nothing. I, I can walk to New York City and be there faster than the person in Queens trying to get to Manhattan. That's what I mean. Oh, you can get to and city distance, faster. proximity. Yeah. Uh, like distance, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's all I'm saying. And that's what, that was my question. Like, yo, are you are you speaking from the tri-state area when you say New York? Yeah. Is rich with opportunity? I'm saying that New York City mm-hmm. is rich with opportunity, full stop. Got you. I agree. All right? It is. And all of the the places that are in close proximity to it all benefit from that. From that. If we lose that, it's fucked up. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. And if, I agree. And if they raise taxes to the point where all of these companies leave, it turns those opportunities. I agree. And then all of a sudden, New Jersey's not New Jersey anymore. Mm-hmm. Because New Jersey yeah, is yeah. great because it's proximity to New York. I agree with yeah. you. But if New Jersey has proximity to Detroit, Cleveland, then you become mm-hmm. Cleveland. Tennessee. Yeah, you're right. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I good totally point. Agree I agree. Um, can I tell you my favorite Steve Stout story no. in the past two years? <laughs> That's not personal between us. Oh my god! I was sitting home. <laughs> yeah, this is yo. You're the man. <laughs> You caused me so much joy that you don't know about. I was sitting home watching first take. 
<laughs> and you popped up. And I was like, oh, that's my man Steve. Yeah. And I'm a Knicks fan. Yeah. So I want to hear what he got to say. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know this incident? And you went on there talking a whole bunch of shit you shouldn't have said. Mm-hmm. And then they snatched your ass off of that screen mm-hmm. and never let you talk again for the Knicks. Mm-hmm. And I said, see, can't have no hip hop nigga up there talking real talk about no team. <laughs> Yeah. That was one of my favorite moments because you was up there kicking it like we kick it. Well, it was very, uh, it was hot on that set and it's hot this set too. <laughs> um, first of all, I think Stephen A is fantastic. He is. He is fucking great. He's fantastic He's and, from under, Queens. and underpaid. And from Queens. He's the man. Yeah. Um, and Huge inspiration. You know, I enjoy doing the marketing for the Knicks. I love the Knicks. I mean, I grew up in New York. I love the Knicks. I think it's smart for them to have you. Yeah. I told you that before. Um, but, uh, and you see what's happening this season. It's amazing. The way they're playing, playing hard. Man, be even Shit, more amazing damn. if they drafted Tyler Hansborough, whatever his name is in Sacramento. But, uh, but we'll talk about Leon that. and Wes have done an amazing oh, job. Shit. Yeah. They're killing. Coach, yes. Tibbs, the whole thing is just ridiculous. It's, clicking. it's yes. great. It's cooking. It's like cooking. It. When, and when fans come back, forget it. Yeah. It's gonna be great. The garden's gonna feel magic. So we're not gonna see you at the Barclays. Like that's the, I saw you. I bumped into you at the Barclays. That was D Wade's last game. Oh yeah, that was a, that was a great night. D Wade's last game. Yeah, yeah, it was a great night. Real yeah. good night. Yeah. Um. So no more Barclays for you. Nah, I'm a Nick. If I'm running with the Knicks. I'm not going. We don't go to Barclays. Yeah. For you. <laughs> go to Barclays to see the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, when the Knicks play. Yeah, when the Knicks play. Yeah. Um. What else do I need to ask Steve about? There's so much shit to get into with you. Uh, is there any Nas stuff I need to know from Steve? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. There's no Nas shit. There's no Nas. The Yo, Grammy win. The Grammy. We can well, talk you can, about you can tell money, me about the- things. Let's talk about money is ruining my life. Let's talk- Independence is ruining my life. No, it's not. All of this stuff that I stand for is ruining my fucking life. Why, man? Be- because as I attempt to to to, and this is too much real talk now. As I attempt to build a business or be an entrepreneur or stand by some of my some of my codes and morals that I live by. It, it is causing an issue with people that I may have grown up with. Let's say that. There we go. It's like when I got a record deal, some of the people that I was doing breaking and enterings with and robbing gas stations with, they maybe didn't understand the move. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. They was like, why, why did you stop? I'm serious. <laughs> they, they didn't no, get, right. they didn't get the vision. Go. So now here we go, right? And let's not even get to now. A few years ago, there were some people in my life that was like, yo, man, you doing all right, so I should be doing all right. And I and I tried to explain taxes to them in that moment. Man, that's a bad idea. It's a bad conversation to have, yeah, Steve. Yeah. When you're talking about somebody you grew up with. Well, they're like, you, we used to you, rob gas stations. Shared, yeah, Why are you talking about taxes? We shared cupcakes together. We have we've done everything together. And you telling me about taxes right now? So, I mean... At every step of the way, there's been like a huge lesson for me to learn, right? And I learned from guys like you, whole Puff, the people that have, Andre Harrell, rest in peace, my God. Ugh. Like the people that, yeah, we don't even need to get there. But yeah. the people that, yeah, you know I mean, y'all. And when you try to implement some of that stuff today, you're dealing with like internet kids and just like, it's just a different time. Well, it's different than y'all doing it in the 90s and doing it today. I think that, no, that, 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 that's never changed, uh, uh, Joe. There's always going to be uh, Survivor's Remorse. Uh, there was a, That was a show, LeBron and that's Maverick Carter did Survivor's Remorse. Was a, a guy who made it and it was all of the, reper- all, all of the unintended effects of making it. Uh, family, look, I just read this last night, man. Can you believe uh, 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 Kobe's mother in law, his wife's Vanessa's mm-hmm. mom, yeah. is suing the yeah, estate? She estate. She's suing estate. her daughter, mm-hmm. yeah. Look at that for been. watching the kids, yeah. 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 I mean, th- these are real, real things that you can't even, you know, once money gets involved, unfortunately, all bets are off. You don't know who your friends are until there's money or women involved. Mm. I know, but I'm asking you how you deal with that. How have Joe, you dealt with uh, that? Um, you probably give it because you love somebody. You give them, you give them the benefit of the doubt, but then it becomes a thing where you can, you you can't move. I mean, you you become, you have no options. You're back against the wall. Either you're going to stay still and stuck in the moment, or you're going to figure out, yo, we got We got to cut ties. We got to move on, man. When you when you have a relationship with somebody, and every single time y'all talk. Everything is like you remember the time when we 
Remember the time when we it's, it's time to go. Yeah. Right, right. Mm. You ain't got no new conversations. You ain't got no new words, man. Looking back. You need some new words. Damn it, that hurts what you said. Chris Michelle, hey. (laughs) 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 He's absolutely right, though. No, no, no. I understand. On on the Denzel movie, when he's like, yo, what you gonna do? Your your success took a shot at you. What you gonna do? Be unsuccessful? You can't be stagnant because everybody can't grow with you. You gotta grow. And that's gonna mean... Letting some people fall by the wayside. It's that hard. You, that you look, grew up. And you don't want to feel like a sellout. You're like everybody you shitted on. You feel like a hypocrite. And you know what, Joe? You're focused on what you're doing. This craft, you got one shot to get this right and change your family's fortunes forever. Right? Mm-hmm. And you got to mm-hmm. finish this job. And you got to finish it off. And if anybody gets in the way of that, they're going to have to deal with it and, and see you later, man. And this is what it is. That's how I feel, but it hurts. It def- the process that, that hurts. That is how I feel. The process hurts. But man, it hurts. The that, process it hurts. hurts. That's it. That, I mean, that's it. The real ones. The real ones understand, man. I got, you know, my I got family members who really go, okay. They didn't understand for a while, and then it turns over time. They're like, oh shit, now I understand really what you're doing. There's a couple things that happen, and they go, oh, it could be things in their life that get them more mature, or they see you ascending to a place where people are like, oh shit. You're related to Steve yeah. Stout? And they go, he really wasn't fucking around 15 years ago when he said this, that, and the third. My mom used to be mad at me a lot because I'm like, why, why you know, go to more family events, go to this. And I'm like, no, nah, I got to go to not see Nas and that. Like, that was more important than the family, family event. Stuff. And they made yeah. me feel bad about that. And now they understand. Mm. Right? And imagine if I didn't do it and didn't have a chance for them ever to understand. I just... Lost the opportunity. Opportunities aren't waiting for you, Joe. Let me ask you, though. Do you think they're more open to understanding it because now mommy doesn't have a mortgage? I think... You get what I'm saying? Well, like, well think I think... Because the, the mommy the part of it, it... Well, once you see it working... Yeah, once you see... I think once... That's I want to give them though, the benefit. Once they I think reap. once they see it working, yeah. it, I'm, it doesn't necessarily have to work. If it has to work for them, that's a different selfish shit. But then they get, but then, but, but then they, it's crystal they clear see to them. Though. I'm just saying, if, if it's crystal clear to them, not because you paid for their mortgage, but because they see that well, you're succeeding. It's crystal clear. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying, gotcha. it doesn't have to be clear only yeah. if it's to their benefit. They, if they love you, they should no, be happy for you. Like mean, my mom okay, understood what was going on before I bought her house. Like she knew what Your was going different, on. Though. Your mother's way more insightful than most. Well, I'm saying that because even your our parents, my parents are, I won't say their age, but they're older. My mother's insightful. What are you talking about? I'm not. I don't know your mother, Steve. I don't know your mother, Steve. <laughs> I'm just I'm not, saying. I'm not taking a shot at you. My, my, it felt like that. Like, my, 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 <laughs> oh my god Light skin nigga from the back Yeah oh. <laughs> Ay yeah, ay yeah. That's funny yo You still work with the Trackmasters? Tone Tone is my best friend man Yeah I don't work with them anymore uh, I think I feel like they're underrated Oh Underrated oh, you, I can't believe Underappreciated baby Underappreciated Oh no yeah Well I definitely want them to get that verses off with them Sexy thing I wanted to get that verses off with um, that's you wasn't yeah. outside. You want to see me? That's what you're doing, yeah. Jermaine Dupree. Don't know, Steve yeah. don't know nothing about this. Hold up, hold I up like for me. Mike, check. Yeah, you know I mean, <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is the remix, by the way. This is that. This is definitely. This remix. is the remix. Some yeah. of y'all don't know. They yeah. sold remixes separately yeah. back then. And it was almost a different song. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah, she was outside. You know a little bit about this, right? Yeah, you're 47, nigga. <laughs> yeah, let's get the bridge. Dan Steve was working in hip hop with this drop. You are old fuck. I, I'm not that old, but yeah. I started. No, this young. is 92. Yeah. 92. How old were you in 92? 92. 22. Oh. Really? Yeah. I started when I was 21. I, was I started when I was 21 in the record business. Um, as Kid and Plays Road Manager. First time when I went up to Uptown Records was the day that Magic Johnson said he had AIDS. And I watched it in Puffy's office. It was Puffy, who I just met, Andre Harrell, um, 
My man. And we all sat there and, well, and we watched him. He had a press conference. Yeah, Many had AIDS at the thing. That, and that was like, when I had been in the music business, like maybe seven months before that. I was in 12th grade. Yeah. And, I ain't gonna um, say my age. I'm chilling. I was, I'm gonna tell you something I learned about, uh, I, I think about this all the time, about um, this idea of fame and just completely changing subjects. But I used to watch Kid and Play and they had lost their way as musicians. And they were walking around and people would go up to them and ask them for their autograph. Mm -hmm. And every time people ask them for their autograph, in their minds, it was like, oh shit, we popping. Mm -hmm. And you realize that people would ask you for your autograph, but they would never buy your shit. <laughs> they just would ask you for your autograph. Mm. And it's the same thing now with followers and likes and shit. Like, no. They don't give a fuck oh, about you because, shit, like, all of a sudden you have all these followers, you have all these nothing. likes, and then you drop a yeah. song and you try to sell some skincare or some nothing. bullshit, and the shit don't break out. It don't yep. even matter. And you're like, well, I have this many people following me. How come they don't care? Because they really aren't into you like that. Right. There's funny. people who like you, and there's people who love you. It's funny you say that. At United Masters, are you attempting to target true talent, or are you attempting to target musicians that have numbers behind them? I am trying to, I am, first of all, we're a platform. I'm not targeting anybody. Yeah, it's everyone. It's everyone. I'm yeah. not targeting anybody. If you want to, if you want to get your music distributed mm -hmm. and you have 20 fans or you have 2 million fans, man, do you think? So it's not you soliciting actively. I'm not soliciting actively. Do you, no. Do you take a percentage or is it like a fee based? There's choice. You get, you can pay $5 a month okay. and keep a hundred percent of your money uh -huh. or you can pay, uh, uh, Free up front, and you get ninety percent. We get ten. Does that does either of those impact uh, the licensing part? No. Okay. No. Not at all. Mm. I'm paying you five dollars a month. Yeah. Buddy. You yeah. can pay five dollars yeah. a month. You can do whatever <laughs> you want. Joe, that's pretty cool. I don't. That's, that's, awesome. that's, 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 that's super options. dope. We're not. What we doing? We're not that doing shit anything. That's amazing. They that's got dope. Apple invested in the company. Google invested in the company. Andreessen Horowitz invested in the company. I'm certainly not fucking around. Um. I got great technology behind the company. There's no, it's all real. You can check it every sideways, upside down. It's all no, good. And I don't care no, what anybody dope. says. That's dope. I took the long route. I've been doing this shit since I was 21 years old. I took the fucking long route. Every single st uh, stone I turned over. Every step of the way. Mm. What do you think about, um, just on a general hip hop question, what do you think about all of the rappers and all of the gun charges that are happening currently? Are you aware? If you're not, I can tell you. I'm very aware. Like, what do you think about that? Is that, uh... Is that, uh... Targeting? Targeting? Are we complicit as a culture in that? Um, is that the new uh, concoction for success moving forward? Like, it seems we're targeting less musicians... And more people with stories well, to sell. Well, Joe, there's another. That's the that's the, the the long version of that, that of that theory is fame and talent always had a relationship, always had a great relationship, and in the last I'd say ten years, fame has told talent, "I got Part, you, yeah. peace, peace out." Motherfuckers yeah. will set themselves on fire for fame. If you're talent, you're not even... It. We've seen it. You don't even know what to do. We yeah. touched on, no, we touched yeah. on it earlier. Yeah, yeah. That, fame that. versus talent, man. They're at war. They used to be They used to be co-conspirators. Mm -hmm. Now they're at war. And fame... And people are like, I'm running... F Once the public started incentivizing fame, talent had to take an L. Right. Mm -hmm. And talent's taking an L right now. Now, there's obviously going to be great talent that is bigger than life. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, generally speaking... You know, you watch people who are talented have to do things to be famous because if they can't get the fame part off, talent, you know, you yeah. got to get attention, man. These kids are putting get guns in videos and doing everything that they're doing. They get the attention. If they can get the song off behind it, cool. Mm -hmm. But they know that if they put the guns in the video and do all kind of a crazy shit, it will get views. The notoriety. And they'll have, yeah, notoriety. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's where we are in culture. I mean, people's... You know, people want to put tattoos all over their bodies and faces and then shit like that. I mean, and people are like, oh, shit, who's that? A nigga who's stupid with a fucking tattoo on his face. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Well, these kids believe, yeah. you no, know, fame by any means necessary. Yeah, yeah. but again, I, that, whatever that I got to do to get it. 
that chan- that translates all genres of music. That's not a hip hop thing. No, I think it's, That's it's a it's, societal it's, no, think, thing. No, I think it's this, no, it's it's really bad. No, it's I, gonna go. I it agree. goes into it goes into. I agree. Want fake asses at yes. eighteen in yes. the whole package? Yes, uh-huh. right. This it's it goes a into a, thing. It goes yeah. into a crazy, crazy thing, bro. Women don't even take p- frontal pictures anymore. Like there are women that won't take a frontal picture. Mm. They gotta turn to the side or they gotta look over their shoulder because that's where you get the likes and the notoriety from. And they're making more money than oh, you mean show the ass? Yeah, yeah, like they're yeah. making a shitload of money. So how do you knock it? Definitely making more money. Than yeah, the DJs. Like, so, yeah. So how do you <laughs> knock it at that point? Yo, dude, <laughs> yo what is wrong with you, man? <laughs> yo, Chris Evans show got you fucked. <laughs> <laughs> you can't target the DJs. Yeah. I'm saying these girls nah, used to the see girls Dr. are making Dez, all the money. Used to see yeah. D- yo yeah, yeah. go to this club yeah. featuring DJ blah blah blah. Then all of a sudden it changed nah, to the over. girl. No, the yeah. bartenders. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they became not even more, now. More you the now, you, now you got the Instagram model who's just there. They, be, they became bigger than DJs. Even doing nothing. Yeah, that's, that's what, what I want to ask you about. Instagram models make more money than DJs. I've seen it. Yeah, facts. Let's make more money than some artists. Let's stay. Let's stay here for a second. Yeah. I don't know your marital situation. I don't know if you're single or not. I'm married. You know that. Don't, I don't, don't listen, try to I'm, act I'm like you don't air. know that. I don't know. The I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know your marital situation. Uh, uh-uh. I'm single, jaded, scarred. Fuck these bitches. Like, what do you want me to do? Like, I'm looking for love in all the wrong places. Oh, I'm open oh, to the 39-year-old, the 26-year-old. I'm open. I'm looking. I'm searching. You're doing the whole MILF program. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. MILF all right. And, all right. And, and I'm a DILF. <laughs> I'm a dilf. You don't think I'm dilfy? You don't think I'm giving them dilfy vibes? I'm not a dad. They want a bone, huh? Huh? I, I can't tell. Hey, if my, if my old, hey, if, if my oldest son have a bad night with the condom, I'm gonna be something else. <laughs> I'm gonna be a grilf. I'm gonna be a grilf. Something like that. Oh, In your social travels, though, yeah. as of late, have you seen? And I'm gonna try to ask this safely. Yeah. And you can skip it if you need to. I will. <laughs> Have you seen a change in interaction since the women have come up financially without the men? Like the women are getting to their own bags, they millionaires alone. Just in your travels, have you seen their stance and position change and be executed differently or expressed differently to men who may have felt like they had to one up financially in years past? Right? That was a safe way to ask that. Yeah, you know okay. what? Because I see it. I, no, I oh, really... I I, and you no, in no, Miami, no, no. nigga. You no, see it, no, too. No, no, no. <laughs> I would like... Yeah, but I don't see that interaction where the girl makes more money than the guy, and therefore, how they communicate in the dialogue happens is different. I haven't seen that yet. Okay. Not even... But I'm sure it's... But, you're but I just... I haven't somebody, seen that. But, Not, but you're oh. asking But somebody. I understand the question. I, I would like to know how what say? that is. What? He's it's in gonna Miami. Be, it's going to be hard for him to see it. He has friends. Yeah, he but, goes to a club. No, I'm not. But again, at his level. That nigga was with like the owner of Kmart last time I seen him. And this is And Tony was like, yo, this nigga nah, owns nah, nah. Kmart. So wow. My point, my point <laughs> is, he's not a $300,000 a year dude, right? So, I mean, so, debatable. I don't know what he makes. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if he makes three hundred grand. All right, you just said he's a part of them. He looks wealthy to me. He's a part of them. He has a, look at his shirt. A gator, look at his nigga uh, shirt. A what? Guys, bottle bag. <laughs> guys, you guys, look at the pink Margiela. I had the pink Margiela. Come on, man. So back to what I was saying, right? So for to ask Steve that question because we were going to address this earlier, right? To ask Steve that question, he might be coming from a point of reference that not that many women can pull a card on him. I didn't think they pulled it on him. No, I just thought he might have been around. I just thought he might have saw but, but it happen. But, but my, my, my circle is doing it. Exactly. So they're not, you know what I'm the saying? The chick's they, not they, pulling the card on my circle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's a stunt. Pulling that's, the card that's a stunt. On my, that's a, a real that's whole stunt. flex. Uh, my, whole, my whole circle <laughs> doing it. So no, I don't see it. Mama, it's put your card back in the deck when it comes to me and my circle. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's true, it's true, it's true. It's true, it's true. true. Yeah. It's true, it's true. You know what I'm that's saying? True. So that's, that's what true. I'm saying. I get it. I get like, it. So it's he true. won't be, yeah, yeah. they're not doing it. that. Did you see, did you see the, uh, this year's Grammys at all? You got it? Say less. No, it was quiet. I was, I was quiet on it. I seen some of the show. I seen some of the performances after. I didn't watch it live. Um, I wanted to see some of the performances afterwards because of... Um, 
you know, specifically Cardi's because it was talked about a lot. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to see that and um, uh, and Little Baby's performance because I wanted to see that because people said it was dope. What do Little you Baby think? One. What do you think about uh, Cardi and Meg gyrating on each other on CBS? That CBS knows they need to do that. Got it. Yep. Yep. That's got same, it. That's power. Kind of power hip hop. Yeah. CBS knows they need to do that. And if CBS don't do that, they don't show up. And if they don't show up, they don't and have to show up. Yeah. Yep. So this is the problem, right? So the CBS becomes complicit. Um, and that's the other thing that, you know, people become more, look, man, back in the days, Joe, remember all these rappers get these deals and then, uh, you know, Rick Ross says one thing and they drop him from Reebok mm-hmm. and they drop, mm-hmm. motherfuckers could say anything right now. Nobody's yeah. dropping anybody. Nobody's doing shit. Really? No. Unless it shows up in the New York Times, no one's dropping anybody. Everybody's with everything because they know, like, the rules, of the, 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 the goalposts are moving, right? Constantly. What is too sexy? What is too far? Look what she's doing. Look what she's doing. What is too sexy? What is too far? What isn't, you know, what yeah. is, how does, it. remember they never What's used to curse on television yeah. and all yeah. of a sudden it was like, Bro, did he just say shit? They say fuck then you wait a little shit, bit, motherfucker. Well, did I was he like, say, did he just say so bitch on so the NBC? No, it's not in that Channel 7, though. No, not Channel 7. No, seven they, no shit. They, they definitely say shit. They say shit on Channel 7. And I, I heard a bitch. They, they say damn and bitch. They say damn that, and I'm bitch. Trying to say, and when I we were young, they yeah. would never. Yeah, that's real. When I was coming up watching TV, they wouldn't even show two parents in the same bedroom. Mm-hmm. They was doing all kind of, they would just show the show. They wouldn't even let them cut inside the bedroom. Like, you wouldn't show a couple in bed. They uh-huh. would never do that. Then it just changed over time. Standards change because, you know now. what? If the audience don't want to see it and they check out, your job is to keep adding more and more layers to it to make it engage. Because if it's not, look, they stripping on stage, man. And to make it controversial, they, they, that'll shit. make them tune in. If, whatever it takes to get that bag. That's true. Whatever it takes to get that bag. But again, that's kind of what we addressed earlier with yeah. regards to um, Deshaun. As long as that money is coming in, Houston Texans could really give a fuck if he molests 7,000 nuns. As well, long as it don't go yeah. public, you know what I'm saying? They're going to yeah. keep it from we, going we'll, public. We'll, that's what we'll, I'm we'll put the ice on it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And, and, and so now, as long as again, you're making it's that money a societal thing where the moral compass is skewed along with the money. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, the moral compass has become a, look at this shit. A, a, a moving target. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Weekly. Daily. Man, Hourly. I'm in the <laughs> advertising business. These guys walk around like when you buy media, um, a company will say, I want to buy this many impressions. Okay. And they spend the money for the impressions and they'll buy it on, you know, some digital sites, digital networks. And they just want to reach an audience and a target and a for a number as cheap as possible. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden you find out that your ad is running before a beheading on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You never gave a fuck until it ran and the New York Times wrote that story mm-hmm. about it. Now all of a sudden you go, we don't want to run any advertising on YouTube. You didn't give a fuck. You didn't even check before. What I said. This right? is the, this is the it, Nike uh, Little Nas You only care, you yeah. only care until it becomes this public. Is, this is what he's saying. It's Nobody the exact same cares. Thing. Nobody That's cares. the Nike Little Nas when it, it's, in, it's when it shows up in the New York Times and you could lose, lose your job, yep. then all of a sudden you act like you care. And you, you're stunned, by the way. That's part of the whole reaction thing. It's like, oh, <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> well, you didn't give a fuck. Right, of course right. you had no idea. You didn't care. Right. You just bought as much media as you can, as cheap as possible, and whatever on the edge programming. Look, ad, people ran ads on the Grammys, mm-hmm. and they look what they were doing. Yes, they mm-hmm. Ties into chasing the fame. Uh, yes, they but, but, but now if the New York Times writes the next day, the Grammys had sexual content on it, it was laying, and all of a sudden it becomes a problem. All the advertisers, we're not running anything on the Grammys again until we see what the performances are up front. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's how it works. It's shoot first, ask questions later. Mm. Yeah. That's my issue. That's crazy. It's my issue, though, with CBS. So, so and, and what's going on with Little Nas X? <sighs> well, do you think Nike had some, you, you think Nike had some wind of what was going on? And now they're trying to dissociate themselves from it? I don't know if Nike had any. I think what I Little Nas it. X did. I think Little Nas X is a is a low key Takashi Six Nine type of from a, from a marketing perspective. 
and figuring out how to get attention around themselves. Mm -hmm. They both have done really good jobs at that, mm -hmm. whether you like their music or not. Um, and uh, do I think Nike had something to do with that? No. Did I think Nike know about it? No. Would Nike have cared if it didn't get media attention? No. No. That, and that, <laughs> now that it got media exactly attention and the devils, the Satan and all that, now they got to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. But had it not had that, they wouldn't have cared. They did. A, they did a Jesus shoe with holy water, and no, they didn't care. As, as same company. As soon as you hear the word Satan, and it's different though. Yeah, it's it's a whole different. You can't, stuff. You what I'm can't compare from, the Jesus no, 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 shoe what to I'm the, the from Satan Nike, shoe that has blood coming in a vial. Nike's standpoint, they don't care regardless until the negative press starts yeah. rolling in. Let me just tell That's the idiots out there who I don't know who's making the shoe. I'm shocked that you idiots believe that a drop of real blood is going in each <laughs> pair of these shoes. <laughs> Oh, like, they, they, they didn't come out that they released stupid. whose blood it was. Too. They are, what happened? No, they came out and said that whose the, blood it was. It's the company it. member's blood, allegedly. It's a drop of... Yeah. I don't care. Just the yeah. fact that you thought... How about, about the fact that we're talking about it? That's, that's all they wanted. That's, that's all they wanted. That's, that's all they wanted. That's real. We just said earlier that people would set themselves on fire. Right. I mean, this is close. Satan, hell, fire. This is that. So... This is true. He just went for it. Like, okay, bro, you got it. You, 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 you Why we got to get into Satan? Well, I mean, what are we talking about, man? Right. And now he has Kirk Franklin on a remix. Dog, he's land. Kirk Franklin's Blue on line. the remix. Wow. The remix of what? The Devil Worship? A song? Are you sure? This is what he said. Kirk Franklin's on a remix. It so, didn't that come out be, so it could be trolling. We don't know. Bro, he's lap could dancing be trolling. the devil. We do not know. On the video. There it is. And he got a BBL. Come on, don't start that again. <laughs> Don't start that again. <laughs> Yo, if Yo. you think Lil Nas X didn't get a BBL, you need to go do some BBL research. I don't, that shit is sitting. I take your word. For uh, yeah, I'm going to take your it's word. Sitting, it's sitting, You got man. it, bro. It's sitting. You got it. Listen, man, what can we expect from United Master moving forward before you leave? Um, that we're going to really make a difference in the music business. We're going to teach the next generation of artists to not sign record deals, to own their futures, own their rights, mm -hmm. make the money, bet on themselves, and really democratize the music business. That's what I want to do. I, I I look at all those Prince videos where he started talking about owning your rights and right mm -hmm. slave on his face, and people thought he was eccentric and bugging out. And you realize he was just, you know, a man who had a vision before it's time. Ahead of his time. And if I do my job correctly, I will definitely encapsulate all of the energy that he stood for as it relates to the, what the music business should be. So that's what you should expect from me. <laughs> Yeah, let that go. Two, three, four. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was a million. Yeah. How, how, how yeah. many? How many? How many artists? One million users. Yeah, make sure they know. One million artists united on the platform. And Joe, check out me and Joe <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow night, because <laughs> Joe's gonna come through. And Joe's not gonna bullshit me because Joe is standing for independence. Joe's <laughs> about that life. <laughs> Joe walked away from a big bag. Mm. And his partners walked away from him. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's the mic drop right there. That's the mic drop right there. That's it right there. That was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're knock shit over. It don't even matter at that point. Yeah, let me help my guy, man. <laughs> nah, that was great. That was fucking great. That was great, man. You know it's love. Thank you. I appreciate you. If you end up in my, if you end up in Miami this weekend, let me know, man. And I'll call you tomorrow. Call you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> call you two more times tomorrow. Yeah, no, call me tomorrow, man. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause. The amazing Steve Stout. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for your intel, your knowledge, your experience, your years and years and years in this business, man. That was hilarious. No, nah, that was dope. That was yeah, no. Nah. He gave it up. <laughs> he gave it up. That was dope. That was dope. Yo, yeah, Steve is that hilarious. still crazy. That nah, nigga sounds like money, though. That <laughs> nigga sounds like money. Yeah. No, I don't knows. even know if he knows that, but... Nah, he knows. Nah, he, nah, he knows. I don't, I don't know, know if I don't he, know know if he, he does. Nah, he